Draper makes an impact. Merritt rises above. Pete gets in some hot water. And the Swans cut us up at the SCG. This is The Sash, definitely not the official podcast of the Essendon Football Club. I am your host, Rob, here with you for another Monday review show at Castaway Studios. And I'm happy to be joined by Joel. Hello, mate. Hello, Rob. Um, Yeah, I've felt worse. I have felt worse, to be honest. Yeah, but you felt better. Oh, yeah, I felt better. (laughs) Um, But I have felt worse. So I'm looking forward to dissecting this, actually. Yeah, that'll be good. And Jones, back again. Hello, mate. Hey, Rob. Joel, good to be back. Good to be here. Um... Yeah, similar thoughts to yourself, Joel. It's definitely been worse, yeah. um, but we continue our trend of batting above our weight up at the SCG against Sydney and uh, plenty of content to uh, talk about today, mm. both positive and not so positive. Mm. It was it was entertaining. Yeah. I'll give it that. It was very entertaining from the very first minute. There wasn't any, uh, any lulls and... We made it exciting. I, I annoyingly, I literally looked away for like half a second as Peter Wright KO'd Cunningham, and I was sort of like, "Wait, what happened? What? 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 What happened?" Yeah. Um, but it was. I mean, you know, it was a pretty good game of footy. Like I had a few mates who were neutral yep. supporters hit me up, and they're like, "Gee, you guys are having a, having a go here." Yeah. And I felt, and at half, half time, I was like, "Gee, we actually might win this." Yeah, me too. And like, to be honest, that's what we've been asking for for a really, really long time. And um, you know, we'll get into specifics later on. But you know, I've said it. I think for many years on this podcast, like I just want to see some mongrel. I hate being known over as like a walkover team. Like mm. no one thinks that when they're coming up cut up against us and they're going to get you know battered and bruised. So the fact that we we're going with the Essendon edge a little bit, even if we were faking it before we make it a little bit, yeah. which it kind of feels like. That's okay. Bit of edging. You know, cross the line if we need to. Yeah. You know? Like, we've got to learn where that line is, but it was, it was good to see and, and, you know, obviously ruffled some feathers. Yeah, we definitely did ruffle some feathers. I mean, we'll we'll get into that in a little <laughs> bit. Um, I have some choice words to say about that. Joel, are you on your phone? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just looking to get some um, new team kits for my social clubs. What sport are you playing? Uh, geez, basketball, soccer, footy, rugby, cricket, pickleball, tennis, netball, a uh, bit of esports. Yep. Gee, bit of a jack of all trades, Jolly. Yeah, well, I'm, I've got a pickleball background. Oh, that's, uh, that's important for the podcast game, the old pickleball background. Um, mm. where, where are you getting these kits from? Get me kits from First Ever Custom. Um, you actually get 10% off when you uh, check out using the discount code SASH10. So all of those team kits for all those different sports you mentioned, you're going to get 10% off. Yeah, that's right. Um, so the credit card's getting a bit of a workout, but um, you know, I, I generally leave things to the last minute, and uh, only fifteen business days turn around for delivery. So I'm going to get them quickly. Only fifteen business days. When that's does right. pickleball season start? Oh, it's, uh, there's many seasons. Many so seasons. Yeah, yeah. All year round. All year round. Well, that's Don's footy, baby. Uh, you can check the links on our socials and in the episode description. Uh, it's been said a lot of times in the past few years, and a lot of pundits have said it that Essen is perceived to have being an easy team mm-hmm. to play against. And I think there's two facets to that. There's one facet about being tough with the footy, and there's one facet about being able to defend well. At the moment, we're doing one of those yep, things. Yep. So if we get the other one right, then hey, maybe we'll be good. But like, it was great that we were fierce at the ball. We were winning a lot of mm. hard footy. We were good at the contest. We won clearances. We even yep. contested possessions. We did all those things right, but we just got let down by the fact that we just suck at defending, James. We kind of suck. We do, Rob. It's the same old story. Uh, and even more frustrating when you break even against a really good contested possession side mm-hmm. in Sydney, mm-hmm. uh, equal premiership favourites with GWS at the moment. And you see the boys work so hard to get it down there and then bang, bang, it's up the other end. Yep. And mm-hmm. there's, yeah, it's, if you get beaten fairly out of the middle or you get beaten around the ground out of stoppages, you sort of can walk away going, well, It was pretty obvious that we weren't going to win that game. But this Mm. one, we were there in the fight. We won Mm. the clearances by 10. We broke even in contested possession, yet got absolutely slaughtered. And it's down Mm. to that transition defense, which gets copy and pasted at the top of my bad (laughs) notes uh, most weeks, unfortunately. Um, So, yeah. As I said, same old story. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. It, it felt like the words "defensive transition" were trending on Twitter. Like that's <laughs> that's that's where we yeah. were at for the game. And yeah, there was just like just some like there were some absolute shocking turnovers that led to goals. Yeah, particularly in that first half when like I did I did really feel like we were on top in that first half, and they just got some absolute janky goals. Yep. And I'm just thinking, um, 
we should be in front at halftime. We really should have been in a good, better position than we were. Yeah. And look, we'll, 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 put, we'll put it out there. Sydney are a very good team. Yeah, exactly. Playing the SCG, they're really, really good. They're like you said, they're, they're Premiership favourites for a reason. Yep. They've rolled Collingwood. They've rolled Melbourne. Um, probably rolling Melbourne looks a bit better than Collingwood this season as it stands. Yes, we are missing a few key people from our team, but mm. so are they. So like, I, I don't like that excuse. I know a lot of people are like, oh, but if we had these guys, it's like, yeah, well, what if they had these guys? Like, it's yep. every team's got people missing. Yep. Yep. But it just seems like the system doesn't stack up to prevent that from happening. Uh, at least enough, yep. and the people who are s- stepping into those roles can't do it. Yeah. Um, you know, f- fill the shoes of the the number one guys in their position. Yeah, it's. It, I think it's. You know, uh, we're clearly not a fit team overall. Like that's what I was talked a lot about in the preseason. Like obviously, people going over to the states to do a camp, and and Brad talking a lot about living that professional football lifestyle. But like that was this is one preseason where like mm. we maybe some of us have had that mindset. You know, mm. a team like Sydney is built on years and years and years of like good pre-seasons and like that AFL lifestyle. So I think concentration in terms of holding a zone for a transition defense or holding position, that's a real big element of fitness that probably doesn't highlight that much. Mm. You know, like we stayed in the contest for the whole game and we were running with them, but our decision-making clearly dropped off in key moments and our um, ability to just like not get sucked to the ball and like really focus on, you know, where we had to be. And I think that actually is a really big part of like fitness as well. And I think that might take a few years for us mm. to get better at. Like it's, it's clearly an issue, but for me, if we're competing as hard as we did and like, you know, competing from a contested standpoint that whole time, like I can deal with the fact that we might structurally need some work if the effort is a hundred percent there mm. um, in some of those kind of initial key indicators. Yeah, I mean, as Paco would say, there was a lot of competingness on the weekend. <laughs> yeah. So we we, yeah. we ticked that off. We got the competingness. Yeah. But yeah, they just oh god, they did like, you know, like guys are golden. They just yeah, knife. It's not. It was knife through butter at times, and you just like you just you know because the SCG and they've got the zoomed in camera, and you don't really know what's going on when you're watching on television. And it was just like you would see one Essendon player after another run towards mm. the ball and then just disappear. It was like yeah. like a video game, and they were just like and fall yeah. over like. Yeah, it was frustrating. And like the, the fitness thing's interesting. Um, like you said, we've clearly, in terms of this, you know, professional lifestyle they've been going on about, we clearly haven't been up to standard with other clubs. They yep. probably have. Uh, I was with a friend of mine who is, uh, you know, Joel, he's, a, he's an AFL umpire. Mm-hmm. He's the closest person I know to a professional athlete because he does like legit, the guy runs crazy numbers yep. every yep. week. And he said to me, he goes, he was like, He's like, yeah, well, you know, they did have an extra game on you. I'm like, does it matter that much? He's like, I reckon their legs are better for it, yeah, having that extra game. Sure. And I'm like, that's the like, it's not an excuse, but in this stupid draw that the AFL gives gives every yeah. year that isn't fair for anyone, yeah. I like I I am of the belief in these early rounds that those teams have had a head start. Yep. But it's still not an excuse. No. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. but I don't know. Just get sick of being cut up. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think a lot of people talked about Sydney in there kicking efficiency and they've got the likes of Goulden and Blakey coming off halfback, but I didn't think they really had to make any ridiculous kicks no. around corners or pinpointing between two players. Mm. It, it felt like players were open and if it didn't go to that player, there was two others sitting there next to them, which inadvertently would get the handball receive and, yep. and off they went. So I don't think we we made them make really good kicks where you can go, well, hang on, maybe yeah. they were just too good. I think we've got some serious issues with our zoning or man on whatever we were trying to do it was kind of hard to know Um, I think it changed last week as well Mm -hmm. uh, against Hawthorne so yeah confusing but um, to your point Joel we've asked for intent and effort um, and we got that now it's about evolving this this defensive game and um, the club are aware of it they're putting time into it we've got people on the coaching panel that are dedicated to it but Mm. The fans are frustrated and it keeps mm. happening every week. And um, to my first point, when you see the guys go in so hard and give so much effort around the contest only to watch it go back over their head yep. pretty effortlessly, um, yeah, it's certainly deflating. Yeah. I think um, for, for me, like I'm feeling a lot more positive in these first two rounds than I have in, at some stages in the past. And and I like I think my perspective has changed a little bit over the preseason or, or over this offseason where I've been like, you know what, I'm going to be patient. And I'm going to try and expect less because we're not that great a team. No, no. And, baby and, out of the bathwater, no, Joel. We're, Let's we're, burn we're, shit. We're just not a good team. And it's going to take time burn to Burn things. Yeah. And, you know, it might take 
four or five years for that mm. to settle before we become a good footy team. I think, you know, when I was looking at the overall team stats, you mentioned a few of them, but the one that surprised me was the turnovers was 62 to 69. So we only did seven more turnovers. Hey. But, like, clearly when those turnovers happened and how they happened... Where was, they happened. And where they happened was what screwed us over. Like, there was a couple of key lapses in concentration that I picked out. Um, the goal that McLean kicked at three-quarter time. Yeah, it was um, That should not have happened. Yeah. Um, obviously really sloppy letting that get out the back and, and just switching off mm. in, and lapsing in concentration at an important time. Um, after um, we got back to within 11 points, that goal that um, Goulden kicked, like it was mm. just merit in that hole. Yeah. Like he was, he got set up from outside 50 and like we should have had multiple players in there mm. like blocking up that space. And it was just like merit trying to stand in front of a few forwards. Like th- those sorts of things is where that fitness mm. I think really comes in. It's like focus. Yeah. Well, I did say, I'm not exactly sure that, the correct number, but I'm fairly certain of the 131 points they scored against us, 80 of those points came from after the 20 minute mark of each quarter. Mm-mm. So they really came home strong late in the quarter, which is just yep. professionalism. It's just being fit. It's just yep. being, you know, a more drilled side. Um, the one, oh, the one turnover that got me the most, and I actually thought he did some pretty good things, and I, and I like Coxie, and I like what he did. But that one turnover he just gave straight to goal. We're like, I. I can't remember if it was a free or a mark. Yep. And he got it and he just kind of did he did the thing he did used to do last year and the year before where he'd stop, he'd look, yeah, he'd look again, yep. he'd look another time, and then he wouldn't he like just didn't make a decision and he just kind of off a step hacks at the ball and dribbles along the ground to a Sydney yeah. player. And then we just that is kick a goal. And I'm sitting there being like Yep. Oh, like I don't know if players get dragged anymore. Like, you know, it's it's yeah. it's not nice football where they'd cut to the box and, you know, like Dennis Pagan or someone would be screaming the phone and they'd show the person yeah. slowly running off the field. But I'm like, he's getting dragged for that. Like, that was, that was shocking. Yeah. And I think that was what, like, there was a lot of those. Because, like you said, there were some very easy goals Sydney got. Mm. And there, and there were some even easier ones because we coughed it up. Yeah. But it didn't feel like they had to do anything too, too crazy. Like, we just went, yeah. here you go. Come on in. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome to our goals. Yeah, put the ball in. Off mm. you go. There was a one where um with Nick Hind giving away that like uh, tackling Papley as he was <sighs> running through as well. Like again, lapse in concentration. <laughs> yeah, it was soft, but yeah. like you know, seven you, minutes you, to go, they're fighting them. back. Don't tackle him without the ball. Don't put your arms around him in yeah. the forward fifty. You know, like uh, so yeah. But you know, I think f- what we have to be doing is really like viewing this game and viewing our team in the context of like the past few years. You know, how we finished the end of last year when we were, like, obviously terrible. Um, Awful. You know, the best team in the comp at the moment on their home deck. Um, you know, we got a lot of things working against us to come and win this game. And to kick 100 points, you know, and to it's be pretty, good, pretty yeah. much the whole way through. I, I think, you know, I just... And again, this is the second game I've watched not live. <laughs> like, uh, it was my wife's birthday on Saturday night, so we were out at dinner, and then like I watched the replay. So it might actually be the secret is just yeah. watching it with an objective eye after you know the result. Yeah. Please don't tell my missus that because um, she's like, you, you don't need to watch the games live, and I'm like, but I do, yeah. I do. Well, yeah, like obviously birthday, you can't. No, you, know, you have to do what you have to do in that exactly. situation. But exactly. um, yeah, maybe it's just that eye that I'm being a bit more patient. Mm. But I just think there's. I'm feeling more positive. You've general. been you've been drinking Brad Scott's cordial. That's what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, that's Joel. right. You've been you've been enjoying yeah. that cordial. Well, actually, looking at like you know reading like on a lot of the Essendon pages on Facebook and whatever, like and Twitter, going through the comments, I feel yeah. like the general perspective is a little bit more positive than it has been in the past as well. Yeah, like from the wide enough community. Yeah, well, I mean, like pre-game, I reckon nine or ten people who were commenting, you know, predictions on various pages were like. Gee, we're gonna get thrashed. Gee, I feel bad about this. This could get real ugly. And it, like, yeah, look, they still had thirty six scoring shots on us, but yeah. we were still in the game with ten minutes to go. Mm. Like, yeah, right, we still had to mount a pretty crazy comeback to pull it off, but we were in the game, you know. And then, yeah, they just got those late goals and sort of put it out. But mm. I don't know, like. 36 scoring shots and then 28 the week before against Hawthorne. And then like yeah. you watch Melbourne play Hawthorne who just, and they just like, you know how Melbourne play, they just suffocate teams. And you're sitting there being like, I think this is like, it. they're not going to fix it by St Kilda. Yeah. Like it, this is going to take months to fix. Let, it might not even be this year that we like start to see a big improvement on this. Yeah. So it is, it's hard to like think too far ahead knowing how easy people score. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think, I think SN fans are a little bit more, patient in terms of they they're buying into what 
Brad Scott is selling. And I think the players are too. Um, they're certainly verbal about it. Obviously, they're not going to say too much else to the media, but I genuinely believe that they're buying into it. Mm. Uh, and he's preached patience, which mm. has rolled up a few fans because they're saying they have been patient and, and we have, but <laughs> yeah. um, I, I think I, I feel ask, a lot ask, more. Ask Mert if he's buying <laughs> Just send him a DM and say, hey, bro, how you feeling about Brad Scott? And I'll tell you what, he'll, he'll say some interesting well, things. Maybe, maybe not all, but yeah. um, certainly for maybe for Joel and I, not sure yeah. about you, Rob, but yeah. um, I think we're we're happy to buy into it and happy to see it evolve over time. But, yeah. um, you know, you speak about the Saints this week. We've probably played a team that we expect to be sort of bottom three or four in Hawthorne. We've played one of the premiership favourites. We now get an opportunity against a side that's probably a little closer to where we're hoping to finish on the mm. ladder this year, uh, potentially without Max King as well, which is handy. So Fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> yeah, a, a good measuring stick this week, I think. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it is. I don't know. I'm always like, it's always like my heart. Hu- my heart and my like my brain. Whereas like my brain's like, no, no, you should be patient and understanding. And then my heart's yeah. just like, I want it now. Yeah. You know, like before the game, like I'm sitting there being like, oh no, like you know, we'll get smacked. I'll be really calm. And ten minutes in, I'm just like trying not to scream to wake up my son who's like right next to me. I'm just like, <laughs> oh, we got a goal. Ah. <laughs> um, uh, I feel like we're on the sort of native train, so let's keep let's keep going that direction. We may as well okay. talk about, I guess, what is the biggest story to come out of the game, uh, and that is the big two liter seven seater. Uh, mm. knocking out poor um, is it Harry Cunningham? Is, that his name? is it Harry? Yeah, Harry. Uh, yep. Is it Harry? Yep. Yeah, I know he yep. doesn't remember his first name. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't yeah. know. Yeah. Well, look, uh, hope he's okay. Obviously, we yeah, you know, yeah, don't don't want anything bad to happen. I was yeah, I read some you know interesting comments about you know Peter Wright being a truck and all this kind of stuff, and I'm just like, we all hope he's okay. But anyway, like. <sighs> at the time it happened, I was like, oh god, this is going to be awful. Mm. Like he's in serious problem. When you watch it in real time, it doesn't look that bad. No. When you watch it on the replay, in yeah. slow-mo, it looks horrific. And so I'm like, I actually like, look, everyone in the media is like, he's getting four weeks. It's going to be three weeks, four weeks. Like, no guarantee. I think there was like one person on ABC, I think it was um, Corbin Middlemiss, whatever his name is. Mm-hmm. He was like, oh, actually, no, I'm, I'm not sure about that. So there's a little part of it, it's like, I wonder if they actually, like he actually can get off this. Because the one, the one that goes in his favor is all four umpires called play on. Yep. Yep. There was no free kick given yep. because they saw it as a marking contest, which it was a marking contest. And then, yeah, unfortunately, Cunningham got smashed. Mm. Um, reading people online who was calling it malicious and calling it similar to Jimmy oh, Webster, yeah. I was like, uh, yeah. this might not be the sport for you, pal, if you think this is malicious. Yeah. My other, my other thing I wanted to say before I let you guys hear the thing, what, having watched Peter Wright in the last 12 months post that shoulder surgery, I've just seen this fear in him that he's paranoid about hurting his shoulder again. And I'm fairly certain that's the shoulder he hit Cunningham with. And we've seen him before go up for packs and not really crash from that mm-hmm. hard, not done things. Yes, he should have put a fist in. Yes, he should have tried to mark it. But there was a little part of it that was like, I reckon he was like, I don't want to fuck my shoulder. Mm-hmm. And that's why he braced. Because he's done that a lot yep. since he's had that injury for us. He hasn't mm-hmm. been crashing packs. This one just came off the bad way, and he's flattened him. So, look, I've, I like, I believe he will get suspended just because that's what everyone's telling me. Yep. But there is a small part of it's like maybe not. Mm. But I still think he will. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the, it's kind of shifted from intent to outcome. I suppose a little bit now in terms yep. of how the tribunal views these. Things. Thanks, Braden Maynard, you dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I think. I think you're exactly right. I think the game's changed and mm. unfortunately there's going to be some examples set this year with players and this is the first opportunity they get now from a marking contest mm. to set a precedent. Uh, Tom Lynch last year, I thought there was a very similar incident That's where right, he yeah. knocked out Alex Keith. He sort mm. of pulled out right at the last millisecond and, and braced for impact to protect himself um, and he had his thrown out, which gives me a little bit of hope but... Like I just said, the game has changed uh, since probably the Brayshaw incident and then follow-up retirement, and that's something we have to understand. Yep. Um, but like you said, Rob, there's still that little bit of hope, which yeah. I'm hanging on to, but I think realistically it's probably three or four. Mm. Uh, so let's hope for the better outcome in three. But yeah, yeah really disappointing. Um, he's obviously so important to us. We yeah. spoke last week around Harry Jones and our lack of 
Ford stocks coming mm. through the ranks. Um, oh, we'll get Chufter in. Big yeah. Chuff. <laughs> I had to check if he was still on the list. Or like yesterday, I was like, oh, hang on a second. Like, is he actually still listed? <laughs> no, the big the Chuff's still there. Don't yeah, worry. Um, he is. He might be playing in some Oh, yeah. Keep nice. an eye out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I feel like he normally has his return game. Is normally okay. Yeah, and then he'll have 10 weeks without a goal. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's, so, that's, that's the chill fight. You know, next week might be okay. I, I, Like, as a percentage, what percentage of what percentage of hope do you have for him getting off? Zero. You have zero. Yeah, okay. I, I just cannot say it. Happening. I'm at like 5%. So that's where <laughs> I'll I'm say 1%. Okay, 1%. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm better than you. A combined <laughs> 6 out of 300% <laughs> right here. Yeah. Yeah. Bit of confidence. Yeah, yeah it's... Yeah. I, it, it's a real shame because obviously Peter's not malicious at all, and like you no. know, some some of the commentary from like fans and stuff like that, they need to pull their head in. Yeah, um, and other things that were said, but um, mm. yeah, like it, it's you know, a split second decision. He it wasn't anything like Jimmy Webster. He didn't like leave the ground facing at him to try and clean. He doesn't go past the ball. Like, he yeah. hits him when he has the ball. It's very yeah. different. Um, as you said, free kick wasn't paid on the night, so I think all of that should be taken in consideration. But I think the fact that you know, he was Cunningham was on the ground for six or seven minutes and just kind of counts against. Yeah, you know, unfortunately. Yeah, I know it doesn't work this way, but Power Pepper received four weeks, I think, mm. for his hit, and that was a genuine line someone up with mm. malicious yep. intent. Yeah, hit them in the head and concuss them. Yeah, and as I said, I know it doesn't work mm. this way, but I just can't see Wright suffering the same penalty as Power yeah, Pepper fair. for a genuine footy contest. Mm. Um, I know he's obviously been knocked out, but. It doesn't seem doesn't seem fair, but I yeah. know the rankings are are what they are, and they mm. grade it the way they do. Um, but it doesn't seem fair to be rubbed out the same as someone that's yeah. genuinely lined yeah. someone up old school. Like, Absolutely. It, like if he got two, I I'd, I'd be like, okay, well, that's probably I'd be happy. We'll take that. Yeah, we'll take that. Yeah, we'll take that. We'll take that. We'll take that. I think it's three. I th- that's what I think. It's going to be three. three. Yeah. Do we? Does Essendon have a bio? Mechanist, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. or that's going to call Doctor Nuff in just. <laughs> yeah. Well, Carlton yeah. had the buy, so I'm hoping yeah. their legal team might be available for us. Yeah. This week. I'd, oh God! Like, they'll get the Calabrian Mafia in. The Calabrian. I'm actually, yeah, yeah. He's the Calabrian King after all. I, I am actually hanging. Like, I'm, I'm secretly hanging out for tomorrow when. I can't remember the guy's name. The guy from Fox who like does the live tweeting from the tribunal, just because I'm just gonna like the arguments that are gonna come up are just they're gonna be great. So yeah, I'm actually hanging out for that. That's that's my Tuesday night planned. Just <laughs> sitting there on my phone reading it. So yeah, look disappointing. Um, you know we all hope he can get off free Pete, but yeah, yeah. I don't think it's gonna happen. Um, I think and so. yeah, hope uh, Mr Cunningham is okay. Um, I guess we're talking about comments on people. May as well just start labeling some people who are absolute hypocrites. Um, I'm just going to start with Lee Matthews on that. Have you seen the show they do on Sunday nights on Channel 9? I happened to catch it last week. Nah. Oh, the, f- the Furnace? The footy, the footy, <laughs> footy Furnace. Very, dram- very dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Bartell and Lee Matthews. Yeah. And Tom Morris. Um, yeah. Lee Matthews compared it to the Jimmy Webster hit. And then he said, oh, this is why we should have the sending off rule. Oh my God. Lee, you would be in prison, mate, <laughs> yeah. if that was the rule when you play. I think, like, Lee, you're at that age now where it's kind of like, thanks for coming. We know you're a legend, but off you go. Yep. You know, there's, there's, there's a home for people like you, and I think that's where you should be right now. <laughs> so, yeah, I know, I know you're one of the goats, but Jesus, pal. Um, and then uh, Tom Papley, speaking of hypocrites, it's... We're truly living on a dark timeline where Essendon and Collingwood fans come together over a common enemy because <laughs> that's what's happened in social media over the last 48 hours. And uh, it is it is all due to Tom Papley, who, look, to be fair, I love the fact that he has chat. It makes it exciting. Mm. Do I disagree with him? Absolutely. Because we actually, the one thing we were good was hard at the footy that day. Yep. We failed a lot of other things, but yeah. He's a he's a hypocrite. He, he was probably best. Hypocrite. He was best on ground, um, and he was an awesome. He's an awesome player. But yeah, love the chat. Hate the bloke. So there you go. Yeah, I think most footy fans outside of Sydney would agree with that. Mm. Um, I like that we got under his skin. Mm. I like that he was frustrated, <laughs> as we talked about before. We've been a pretty easy team to play against, mm-hmm. and I feel like sort of those small forwards like you. Your Papleys and your Ginnivans and your Toby mm. Greens, they all look for Essendon on the fixture and circle yeah. that and go, beautiful, nice, easy game, unaccountable. On the flip side of that, mm. he had 24 possessions and kicked four goals. So, yeah, so I'd like to think we gave him a tough night and got under his skin, but he was best on ground, as he said, yeah. which is frustrating. We, um, I, I actually, if you guys remember, I actually said in my group chat, in our group chat when Jake Kelly was a laid out and I said, Tom 
happily is going to murder Nick Hine. Mm, and, and he did. Like, like McGrath <laughs> might have been on him at times, but it didn't really feel like we really had anyone doing a good job of him. So, yeah, disappointing that we didn't have Jake the Snake because he might have kept him a bit more accountable. But, mm. yeah, he uh, he killed us, absolutely. But, yeah, come on, mate. Let's let's be real. Um, I also just wrote down Tom Morris as a hypocrite, not really for any reason, just because I just felt like putting it down. Yeah, I'm sure this is. I'm sure he said something and done something, or we he know he's have. done. But yeah, <laughs> he's yeah, done a bit. Yeah, he's done stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's always it's weird that isn't it? Like you know, zero points of reflection sometimes from people in the media of like what they were like. It's like, come on, really? Yeah, come, come on, really? Yeah. Like whereas, like I'd actually rated Lee Matthew was like would would come out there and joke about it, be like, yeah, I'd be in trouble if that was my day. But instead, he was like, oh, we can't do that now. It's like, who are you? Yeah. Who are you? I've seen your highlights. I've seen the team you used to coach. Yeah, like, well, that's it. Brad Scott is taking a leaf out of your book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's the Essendon edge, whatever whatever that means. Yeah. Um, do you guys have anything more to add about Paps in those comments that were in the media or? No, I think you summarised it well, like, you know, just hypocritical. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they went after Nick Dacos pretty hard last year when they had the opportunity and he was mm. the instigator and he's been the instigator many times before. Yeah. So, as I said, yeah. you know, a bit of a taste of your own medicine and you didn't like yeah. it, but... Again, he was best on crowd. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. <laughs> can't take it too far. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure Mac only like he was like starting someone like off the ball at one point. Yeah, Saturday night. It's like, like everyone's doing it. Yeah, like you know. Mm. But like you said, it's it's good that we got under their skin. Obviously, we just couldn't execute. Um, these are some stats that I saw on the AFL page today. So we're, I mean, it's obviously only two. Two games. We're ranked 16th for inside 50s. We're ranked 18th for scores per entry, oh. and 16th for scores against. Um, obviously, very small sample size. Like, you can't blame the back six. Like, it's it's you know, a combination of everything. But mm. again, it just comes back to the fact that we can't defend, and it's not very good. Yeah. One of the things we do on transition is like, and I notice other teams really don't do this. Is we just we really get sucked to the ball. Mm. Like two or three people will break from whatever they're trying to do and they'll run straight at the ball. So as soon as that handball goes over the top or like back and then a kick sideways, like we're so out of position, you know, I, and I, I don't know how easy that is to coach, but it's just, we just get sucked into it. We, we see ball and we just get drawn to mm. it. Um, and then we're so open behind that. Um, and it's not, it's, then it becomes so easy. Like you guys said. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a big, slice through us. It's a big problem. And like, yeah, you watch back some of the the goals that they kicked, and like, yeah, I understand like you can't be chasing all day, but there's always so much jogging. Yeah, from our midfield on the other way. Yeah, and even the half forwards too. I guess you can throw them in there, and maybe even the half backs. But there's just constantly so much jogging as the ball is just going past them, and then you just see guys going, "Yep, oh no, I can't get there." Yep, like, like I'm gonna call out Ben Hobbs. He it's his first game back, and I know he's very young, but like. Very little impact mm, in the defensive yeah. stakes. Didn't lay a tackle, and I think he was at mm. ten or dozen centre bounces. Which for someone who's there at the coal face, where one of the one of the best opportunities to tackle someone because yep. you're not running at full speed, to not lay one tackle. Like I can see why he has t- you know at times been left out of the team. Yeah. And he's one. He's one of the players that I've looked at, and when Brad Scott's spoken about, you know, the professionalism, all this, I'm, I looked. I've looked at him and gone. I feel like he's one who might need to, you know, work yep. on that a little bit. Yeah. Um, like I, I don't want to single out just one player because he wasn't alone in that. But that's just not good enough. I was surprised to see that from Hobbsy. I think when you think of Ben Hobbs, you think of contested footy mm. and physicality and tackling. Mm. I'm not sure what his tackle numbers have been like in the past. Maybe it has been something that he needs to address, but it's certainly not how I think of him yeah. as a player. And I was mm. really glad to see him come back into the lineup, mm. albeit a late change with, with Parrish out. But um, yeah, a bit disappointing to hear because he's not not a, a soft player by any means and not someone I'd associate with avoiding physicality or mm. not being accountable. So yeah, a disappointing statistic. Yeah, mm. I, I, like, I, I do wonder if like, obviously he was fit enough to be named, but I do wonder like... Mm. I think he played. Has he played one full VFL game? Maybe. I'm not sure like if he maybe. played even a full game. Yeah, well, yeah, he's, he's played, played one. He's played yeah. minutes in the VFL. Yeah, he's played minutes a few times. So I do wonder if he actually like is 100 percent because often for a lot of players, often that first game back from a bit of a lay lay off, and yeah. obviously it's his first game for the season. Yeah. Um, you can be a little bit slow, but I don't know. I just expected more. Um, 
Do you guys have any more bads that you guys want to single out before we get into the goods? Just we did lose. I know, I know, I know. We're all talking about how like it was a good effort, but like we did lose. So if you want to tip on someone, this is your chance. I didn't really <laughs> have any singled out players, but I did have one point that I noted down, and that's we had one goal kicker from our midfield. Mm. Uh, we kicked a hundred points, and only one midfielder kicked a goal, and that was Merritt with his two. Interesting. Um, the fact that we look so terrible on transition defence, you'd like to think, well, at least if we're running forward, some of our midfielders are getting on the mm. end of it and, and hurting them on the scoreboard and at least making them think twice about being accountable. But uh, apart from merit, no one got on the scoreboard. Compared to Sydney's midfield, Warner 2, Goulden 2, Blakey off halfback kick 1, Heaney kick 1 and James Jordan kick 1 towards the end of the game. So that was sort of a little bit of bit of a worry if we're gonna mm. if we're gonna run forward and not not yeah. hurt them but not be prepared to run back and they hurt us um that was pretty disappointing and again we kicked mm. 100 points so um credit to the forward line for for capitalizing but mm. um that's certainly an area where i think we're gonna have to do some more damage moving forward yeah it's it's just been such a long running issue like i can remember someone saying to me like five years ago been like yeah these guys just don't want to defend yeah and like yeah right there might be one or two but the players still there from that that window, but like, yeah, it's still a fairly new, like it's a relatively new group of players, and they're doing, like we said, we're doing all the physical stuff, but it's just like, why are you not running two ways? Yeah, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. It's it takes a long time to turn the Titanic, mm. um, <laughs> you know, uh, and we've had plenty of icebergs in our time as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think like again, you know, again, I was watching it obviously objectively, knowing what had happened, so. Uh, I just thought I saw some efforts that were better. They were very like, um, you know, localized to like one player mm. or one moment. Mm. But there was like this one moment where um, they got the ball at halfback and Nick Cox was there at halfback and he sprinted the whole way back. It was when Hayden McLean mm. marked like 10 meters out and kicked a goal. Mm. And he didn't get there, but he followed a player the whole way back and he ran past mm. three or four other players sprinting of I videoed it on my phone. I'll show you guys after. Oh, good. Um, where he like got he he got back and he didn't affect the contest, but he ran past senior players. Mm. And you know, sometimes it just takes one or two of those sorts of things each week for the rhythm to start and for them to be like, okay, I'm I'm getting made look bad. And and he made some mistakes. Mm. But again, I thought he did some good things throughout. And you know, we're just not going to be perfect straight away. And I know it's been a long time, and this has been an issue. for I a want long it now, time. Joel. I'm impatient. But, I want it now. You know, <laughs> if if we've got some people who want to do it and obviously Merritt is someone who wants to work hard and wants to lay tackles and stuff like that as well. So I'm just hoping that we get there. Mm, yeah. Eventually. Yeah. No, I, I, no, I definitely feel the same. Um, yeah. You just have to, you just have to wonder sometimes, but look, end of the day, they are a very, very good team mm. and we're a long way off. Um, I guess we can talk about some goods. The Essendon edge. Yes. What? It's weird that this has just become a thing in like a space of a couple of days. It's quite funny. Just Brad Scott's like, yeah, you know, we want to have a bit of a you know edge about us, but a bit hard. And everyone's like, okay. And then suddenly, just like all game, they're just like Essendon edge, 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 edging. Yeah, we're edging. Like, so this is, <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, I guess, is it sustainable? Like, it's all well and good for us to go and try and you know bruise up a team that. You know, it definitely seems like there's a real rivalry amongst those playing groups. Like, yeah. whether or not, like, they're not definitely not traditional rivals by any stretch, but there's def- there's a bit going on between us and Sydney at the moment. Like, can they, like, repeat this? Like, are we going to be able to go out and to do that to St Kilda on the weekend, or was this just a, a one off? What do you reckon? Uh, I feel like Brad Scott's the type of person to instill that edge mm. into a side. Mm. We spoke about. Lee Matthews and Brisbane and and the way he played, um, that's certainly not out of his realm to then mm-hmm. go and pass that on to his players. And, you know, it's something we haven't had for a long, long time uh, at Essendon. So I'm certainly not arguing against it. Whether it's sustainable, that's a, a really good question. Um, I hope it is um, because we haven't, haven't had a brand of footy where supporters mm. have gone and expected to see week in, week out. If this is our brand and we can sustain mm. it, then that's fantastic. Um, also thinking about it today, I think we've got the players to do it. Uh, mm. It's always that age-old question, do you instill a game plan and then hire the players or recruit the players for it? Um, or do you go the other way and look at the players you've got and then instill a game plan? So if that's something we're committed to and I think we've got the players to back it up, mm-hmm. then I'm all for it and yeah, if teams are 
are looking at the fixture and going, oh, shit, we've got to play Essendon this week. Um, that's something we've, uh, well, maybe never had. It's been 20 in, years. In my time <laughs> of following <laughs> footy. Um, so it'd be nice. Yeah. I think um, the Essendon edge is us edging finals for 20 years. <laughs> edging <laughs> finals. And, yeah. and never getting there. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what the Essendon God. edge is. Um, God. No, I, look, I... I Agree. I think it was really good to see. I know. Yeah, I agree. I, I hope it's sustainable, but it's, there's obviously a clear intent there mm. to try and do something different. And you know, we were trying to make them earn every mark that we could get to. You know, that happened in a number of contests. Um, they have a they had a lot of uncontested marks in the first few weeks. Was so. that Draper one actually that bad? Like it just looked like he was a bit unco and just kind of like fell into him. And everyone's like, "Oh my god, it's outrageous! How dare he?" I'm like, he just looked pretty like dumb and uncoordinated yeah. in that moment. Like, yeah, I don't sure. understand the carry on about that, but. but even so, just like good, make him earn it. Like yeah. you know, like that's what we want. Yeah, you know, footy, yeah, yeah. If it's a bit late or, or whatever, we, yeah. We, as we said we've been soft for a long time, so a bit of mongrel is good. And and um, you know, I think we want to make teams think twice about entering a contest against us. You know, and and that was when you look at Hawthorne and you look at Geelong and you look at all these teams that have had even like Sydney, huge, times, yeah. yeah, huge success. You know, you hate them, and they're hmm. you, they're. You know, they've got players like Papley or Rampy or whatever who you don't like that do dog shit sometimes. <laughs> you're like, that's what you want. That is what you want, you know? It is what you want. And I don't know, like, you know, if this is what how this evolution that we're trying to be on, if this is the, the next step is to become that really strong contested team, um, that's a good direction. It's not, you know, the be all end or like, hmm. you know, Hawthorne on a, a lot of flags without being a good contested team. Um, but it's you know it's a step in the right direction because we've spent it feels like a decade basically being like oh we've got a small midfield we've got a small wimpy mm. midfield and then this year actually doesn't look like that's the case like you know Settlefield's big and strong Perkins is big and strong Durham's big and strong Merritt you know does really well for how big he is yep. um, and then you know some of the other guys as well who go around there it's like oh no this is a tough midfield but they just aren't doing all the other things that the best teams are doing Yet, mm. yet. Hopefully, they will someday. But yeah, I don't know. Just f- seems like a long way when you watch guys like Errol Goulden run around yeah. the opposition. You're like, we don't have anyone like. That. I mean, I guess we have Zach Merritt actually. But um, yeah, they've just they're a very good team. They are a very good team. I hope um, they lose the grand final. <laughs> <laughs> Depends who they're playing, I suppose. I don't know. Imagine an all Sydney final, GWS Sydney Swans. Yeah. Oh, wouldn't that be a fizzer? Yeah, <laughs> you'd want. Yeah, definitely want the Giants to be winning that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think on the same, like following on the same, uh, tact of like trying to get a team identity. One thing I thought we did well, um, last week and this week, which we haven't done and, and has always kind of pissed me off a little bit was just get around each other. Like, mm. you know, whether it's like backing up someone, if they're getting roughed up a little bit, whether it's like someone lays a good tackle and five or six blokes go and pick him up off the ground and pat him on the back, you know, mm. like I've, I've feel like I've watched a lot of games over the last few years where like someone's done something amazing and no one's gone up to them and it's yeah. like, Use that, you know, use that motivation and get it to inspire instead of just like, oh, that guy just, you know, did a fantastic tackle, so we'll leave him and not celebrate, you mm. know. So a bit of camaraderie I thought I saw was building and, you know, not in a beezer, but on the field. <laughs> um, so, Bro, you yeah, got any water? I, I really oh, what? That. I thought that was a good, you know, seeing yeah, us when, get around each other. When Mary got that hole in the ball tackle and then all, like a bunch of the boys came in and got around him, like I was, I was pretty G'd up on yeah. the couch, you know. 100%. I, if I wasn't, you know, sitting next to like a six week old, I would have been yelling really loudly. I was just like, Arr! yeah, <sighs> yeah. yeah. I really, I really enjoyed that. So, no, it's a good point. It's a good point. Yeah, like it feels like there's a bit more of a a unit mm. there as opposed to other teams. Um, James, we've we are positive, I guess, for, for for points. Is there a good you'd like to go with player or something else? Well, I've got him on the top of my list, and I don't think we mentioned him last week because we. Sort of joke that he does it week in, week out. So we'll look elsewhere, but can't go past the skipper, Zachy Merritt. Um, probably one of the more complete games you'll see. 32 disposals, two goals, six tackles uh, at 81% disposal efficiency mm. or whilst Not being bad. looked after by Robottom, who's their sort of run with type midfielder. Um, he always leads by example. Um, it'd be nice if a few others could, could follow. He's obviously our A grade alongside... Parish who who we're missing, but um, yeah, a lot of respect for Zach mm. and the way he goes about it, and I hope that um, that leading by example then energizes a few others. But yeah, a real complete game. He works both ways. 
his efficiency is unbelievable and he's getting the most attention on the ground from the opposition. So I'm um, pretty proud of Zaki and um, yeah, he, uh, he, he, he's probably keen for, for Darcy to come back because I think mm. that often separates the attention that he gets, but mm. um, he couldn't be doing too much more at the moment. No, no, he couldn't. Like I feel bad for him at times like because he's just so far and away the best player in the team. Mm. Like we know there are guys who in their moments, but just so consistent. Like, you know, he's, what, a three-time All-Australian at the moment? So, yeah, like, I reckon he'll have at least five by the time he's wrapped up his career, if not more. Yeah. He's already won four Crichtons, three Crichtons? Four, four, four. I think, yeah. Like, yep. you know, he is the player of our generation. And hopefully we can get some other players up to a similar level to, to do something. Otherwise, it's just going to mm. be, a, you know, another, another one of those great Essendon players who had no one else around them, you know. <laughs> There's always a few of those at other clubs as well, but yeah, God, he's good. He is. That's great to see. If only his brother, if only his brother was as good as him, we kept uh, Jackson <laughs> still playing. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about him. God. Um, I thought Drapes was pretty good for a half. Yeah, yeah. Like such a. It's, it's like, like not no shame on Goldie, but just it felt so different with him there. Mm. Like just wild physical. Just absolutely took it to Grundy in that first half. Yeah. Completely ran out of gas after that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, God, if we, if we are ever going to be the team that we want, a, a Sam Draper who can do that for four quarters, week in week out, is essential. Yeah. Like that, he does. He, he has an X factor that other, other a lot of other players don't have in the competition, particularly in that position of the ground. Um, and yeah, he's just. He, look, he's actually one. He's the the one who has to be that professional. Mm. He's the one who has to, you know, stop going to Carl Cox gigs and you know <laughs> start start running laps of the tan a bit more. You know, yeah, yeah. He did look good, didn't he? And and you're right. Just how like how much he was able to just muscle Grundy and and just like treat him like he was a stick and throw him around and win the contests like. It was super exciting to see him back, and yeah, he, he clearly adds a huge presence for us, and like puts a little bit of fear into the opposition, whether he does like something too physical or not. Mm. Um, so that was really, really awesome to see. And as you said, he, he'll build into the season. You know, first game back at that top flight level. Yeah. Um, but it was awesome to see him, and and you know, kicked a nice goal from outside fifty as well. Yeah, wasn't I expecting that? I was like, oh, sure, this will go anywhere, and he drilled it. Yeah. So we had both rucks kick a goal. That's, yeah, that's something. Mm. We, they seem to do that when they play Grundy, but yeah. obviously didn't do anything else. Uh, like, how, how do you feel about the two rucks? I thought it worked really well. Obviously, Draper ran out of steam, as we spoke about, and, and was subbed off, but I sort of noted down that they complement each other quite well. Draper's that bash and crash style a little bit um, all over the shop sometimes, but um, I think the midfielders walk taller with him. Around and then Goldie, sort of that wise, crafty old mm. wary uh, ruckman that mm. seems to be really good in terms of setting up for centre clearances, tapping to the midfielder's mm. advantage. So I think we sort of get a look at two different styles. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Goldie snuck forward and looked looked all right. Um, and Draper's still improving his forward craft, but I think that's getting better every time yeah. I see him. Um, and again, he's missed a lot of footy over the last little bit. So mm. cutting him some slack a little bit, especially in that second half. And, and then obviously, as I said, got subbed out. But yeah, I think they complement complement each other really well. And I think a real good opportunity to work over some teams that, that just run with the one ruck mm. um, and hold them accountable and, and make them think about going forward and yeah, obviously running over the top of them. Yeah, because they're probably one of the few teams who their number two ruck and McLean's actually like pretty handy. Like mm-hmm. he's, there are definitely teams who throw guys in there who are just not up for it, but they go, oh, well, yeah. whatever. It's only five minutes and we'll, we'll, we'll deal with it. Yeah. But, you know, McLean's pretty handy, but um, yeah, I don't mind it. And especially if we're not going to have Peter Wright for potentially a month of footy. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's pretty important that we've got them both. Mm. Um, the Gresh, the real Gresh. Not bad. Yeah. Good not game. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Very good game. He's, he's justified uh, us picking him up so far this year. Um, very like calm in front of goal, realistically, from what it seems. Like I know that one of the things we we're a bit concerned about was sometimes him maybe in his field kicking blazing away a little bit mm. or making a pretty 
big error, but his kicking for goal and his set shots have been really fantastic. Yeah, which I was not expecting mm. from what, what I'd seen of him at St Kilda. And speaking of my friends who support the Saints, they were like, geez, just unreliable in front of goal. Mm. I was like, oh, what are we going to get? But yeah, I really like it. Like he, We crave a small forward who can actually kick goals regularly um, ever since, you know, Tip has stepped away. Mm-hmm. Going to be fascinating to see how he goes against his old side because yeah. you know we were obviously crap in that practice game against them. But I do wonder is is it, is it going to is he going to have a bit of you know have the last laugh against them or are they going to roll us and he's going to get nowhere near it? Yeah, yeah, oh, they'll certainly go for him. I think I think a lot of Saints supporters sort of feel that Gresham was maybe a little bit soft and and wasn't interested in in that style of footy, but. I was really impressed with his game. He was higher up the ground this week. He had 23 disposals mm. alongside his three goals, 11 score involvements, which I thought was a sign that That's he's using that ball yeah. well. Um, mm. And I felt like towards the end of the game, the players were really trusting him and, and looking for him to be that user like we do often with with Merritt and obviously Martin as well. He had some real class to our forward half um, and I reckon he'll he'll completely blow a game out at some point this year and kick five or six and, and yep. be best on ground. Uh, Anzac Day would be nice, but um, I'll take it take it at any time at the moment. <laughs> and um, the other thing I noted down was often we rely on Stringer in mm. this area, that, that sort of X factor, mm. come into the midfield for a little bit, go forward, drift forward, kick a couple of goals. So it'd be nice if we could share that responsibility yep. a little bit. Now Langford, the other one that's sort of coming into that space too, but... Um, yeah, it'd be nice to share that responsibility rather than Stringer or Bus, which it's been for a little while now in that space. And obviously Waller um, retiring now, he was sort of that other one there. But mm. um, yeah, I was really, really impressed with Gresham. I, I think we've got a good one. And um, yeah, all eyes on him this week against the old mob. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, like, I mean, our forward line's been two weeks very, very good. Like it's looks really, really good yep. with the guys we've had in it. Now it obviously is the first time we're going to have a, a real big, well, potentially a real big force change. Peter hasn't been suspended just yet. Yeah. Although he probably will be. Although <laughs> yeah. he probably will be. Look into the crystal ball there. I think. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, mate, let, let's let's mate, let's pick that up in part two, I reckon, because we're probably due for a little little break, and then yeah. let's let's come back. We've got some hot takes. Hot takes are back. These will be interesting. I've listened to some <laughs> of them, and then I felt like let's just go rogue and just listen to them cold and. If they're really offensive, I'll have to delete them. But if they're not, then we'll keep them in. But mm. who knows? Um, let's take a break. We'll back after this. Oh, I love it already. Oh, yeah, this one's fun. The Bombers are coming hard. They're coming very hard. <laughs> <laughs> that's from... Uh, the Bombers are coming. That's from Broden Kelly's podcast, The Footy with Broden Kelly. I saw that on Instagram today and had a good laugh. Um, fortunately, the, the the bombers came a little bit early, and uh, edging. Yeah, we were edging. We, we didn't edge well enough. <laughs> we didn't edge well enough, and we came a bit early, and everyone was a little bit disappointed in the end. Yeah. Um, Joel, you said you wanted to talk, speak about something before we get into the hot takes. Yep. Uh, shout out to Auntie Donna. That so love those guys. By the way, I could listen to their podcast forever. Mm. Um, so we touched on the forward line towards the end there and kind of mentioned a few things. And I think that's starting to become a real threat for us, which is exciting. Um, you know, Peter Wright, Kyle Langford, Jake Stringer, who's looking fit, Jade Gresham, and then whoever else is in there. I think that's, that's a very threatening forward line and it, and it gives opposition teams headaches. And we kicked 100 points both games so far this year. Um, and as you mentioned, you know, not with a lot of midfield support this week. I, I think a few midfielders kicked goals last week, but... That's just exciting for me as well, is is because that's that's also been an issue ours for a long time. Is like where is the score going to come from? Mm. Um, and so to have different and a, a diverse like attacking option because they all do different things mm. is exciting. Yeah, no, it definitely is because yeah, gone to the days of you know Peter or Bust a mm. couple of years ago. Whereas now it's like oh, no, there's actually a bit of attacking threat here. Um, you just obviously hope when they're all they're all there, you you get the most out of it. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get some hot takes. Um, going in blind to some of these, so maybe a bit of editing that happens. Maybe I'll just leave them uncut on the premium feed. If you guys want to hear some really rogue people <laughs> say some wild shit, here yeah. you go. Um, this first one is from Cry Baby. Thanks, Cry Baby. Tom Papley has the audacity to go, oh, Essendon are going too rough at us behind play on their dirty. Nah, 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 nah. When his team spent a whole game trying to rough up Nick Dacos and still got smacked. 
how about you turn up for more than 10 minutes in the grand final and then you can start talking about what's rough and soft, man. Fair enough, Mr. Crybaby. Fair enough. At least they made the grand final. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any comments on that? Or we keep going. No. I don't know if that's the last time we're going to hear Tom Papley's name, but anyway, no. we'll keep rolling. No. Uh, Corey, thanks, Corey. Very pleasing performance, I thought, last night. Sydney, FCG, always going to be a massive challenge. And I thought we took that challenge right up to him. I didn't think any of us thought we would win, but I don't think any of us th- thought we would fight the way we did. Very physical from the get-go. Our attacking approach on the game was fantastic. However, I think our biggest weakness was on display. And that weakness is our lack of forward-line intent slash forward-line defensive efforts. Um, It has been a massive concern of mine for a very long time. Um, There was numerous times we go into the forward-line, quick turnover, and there was just an abundance of Sydney players at the ready. Quick handball, quick kick, and it was straight down the throats of their forwards, resulting in a set shot, which is... Need to fix up this area. We can't afford to be doing it against the better teams in the league because they will really execute and really damage us. Um, however, no Peter Wright next week. You would think Redmond returns, walk straight back in the side with the dropping of La Verde. St Kilda has some pretty big outs as well. <laughs> I think we'll bounce back. Dons by three plus goals. Up the plane. You, you, you're not just, happy about Cole just, Oliver. Just called the drop with Laverne. <laughs> I just without any hesitation. That was very funny. Actually. Uh, inside fifty tackles. I wrote this down. Um, they had eleven. We had ten inside fifty tackles. So okay, that's not too big a change. Yeah. So so that that's all right. But it's I think what he's saying there, or, or the, the broader point, is what we're speaking about. It's just the whole ground defensive transition. Like mm. it, it does start there, but it's just. Sloppy the whole way through. Yeah. Um, so inside 50 tackles, Perkins 2, Menzi 2, Langford 2, Durham 2, Peter Wright 1, Zach Merritt 1. So like, it's a pretty good spread. I mean, I'm trying to think who spent a bit of time down there. I mean, Colwell kind of flowed there a little bit. Gresh- Gresham's probably the one who didn't, mm. but like he was obviously doing a lot offensively. So you could probably let that one go. But yeah, like it's stats wise, it doesn't look that bad. But... I suppose it's that 18th for scores per entry. Yeah. You get in, the midfielders don't get time to set up. Someone's not having a set shot. Mm. Mm. Comes straight back over the top. And you spoke about us running in waves. Yeah. On the replay, when I was watching it, it looked like exactly that. There was sort of three or four midfielders all in a row. And over the head it went and they yeah. were out. Mm. Um, so it's probably a, a yeah. testament to that stat in particular. Yeah, There, there must be like, because for a lot of the last quarter, first 10 minutes or something, it was like 70 something percent in our forward half. So we obviously have the ability to do it. In some patches, you yeah. know, that, that's, that's a good stat for that period, but clearly not sustainable, but you know, that maybe there is some light at the end of that tunnel somewhere. Yeah. Uh, next one's from Christian. Thanks, Christian. Nick Martin is way more impactful on the wing. Short and sweet. <laughs> Thoughts, Joel? Uh, well, he had 31 touches and I mean, he was kicking pretty well this week. Um, so... It's look. It's, maybe he is more impactful still on the wing. You know, maybe maybe when Redmond comes back, we do look at that. But you know, I still thought he had a pretty good game mm. as well. Uh, yeah, I don't know. it's an interesting one. Yeah, what I don't know. Yeah. Well, I don't know it, because I th- I think like you'd probably only do it if you're losing someone on the wing because obviously Dersen played there, Durham played there, Cox played there at times. Um, there may have been other people that I'm missing. So. I feel like if one of those players had to be out of the side, that's they might kind of mm. go to it. But like, it, it seems like they're pretty content with it for now. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think there's probably a bit of recency bias. I'm really keen on him at halfback. Maybe a bit more optimistic than both of you guys. But he was in contention to be an All-Australian wingman uh, last year. So I think it's easy to sort of get caught up in, in what's happening now. Um, but I think it's the right move for mm. us. And he's still learning that craft there. Yeah. He's had two, two full AFL games there. So... Um, yeah, I'm happy to happy to persist with it. Yep. Uh, next one is from Brod Broddles. Okay, Broddles. <laughs> I'm saying that right. First of all, fuck you, Sydney. <laughs> Happily, you're a dog. John Longmire, you're a dog. Buddy Franklin, he's a dog too. <laughs> Still scarred from all the goals he kicked against us. But uh, we need Parish back. Hurry up. Yeah, it did feel like at times we did need Parish back. Um, would have been nice to have that extra, you know, experienced mid running through there. 
Um, but yeah, he's still dominating in the clearances. We did, and that's been a really good sign. Is that he he was by far our best clearance player the last season, and we were very reliant on him at times. There were times we did okay without mm. him, but it is a good sign that we've been winning it uh, at the coal face without him. But just got to do the rest. Yeah. Mm. Uh, next one's from Chris. Thank you, Chris. G'day, fellas. Disappointing to get the loss, but we're very competitive in that. But I do see one positive in this game. Um, far the Essendon edge that Brad keeps talking about. thought that was really on display. Um, I think there's a sneaky win in the fact that Tom Papley is still playing at Sydney when he could easily be at Carlton. But Dodoro blocked it for the sake of pissing off Carlton. So I think that's just a win in itself. Um, so at the end of the day, Swans are probably going to win the flag at the rate they're going. But Carlton don't have that forward that they've been desperately craving, that small forward. So get a dog up, your Blues. Oh, that's great. Yeah. It's the, little, it's the little wins, guys. It's the little moral victories. Turn that around really well. I love that Carlton have had the bye and we've still managed to give him a drive by uh, this week. That's yeah. brilliant. Exactly. They didn't win this week. They didn't play. Um, next one's for this one that is called Where Wucked. So I wonder what this is going to be about. Why the fuck is it always like this? Get the fucking hopes up. And we go fucking crashing down. Where was Caldwell in the second half? We're out, Peter. We're without Peter right now for fucking, you know, <laughs> three plus weeks. Oh boy, we're so fucked. <laughs> Definitely so. Definitely sober. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Hadn't had any beers. Yeah. Thoughts? <laughs> uh yeah, you shouldn't have had your hopes up after a win against Hawthorne. Yeah, you know, that's your own fault for getting your hopes up after beating Hawthorne, who are terrible. Yeah, I mean, I thought Corbo was good, so I can't yeah. agree with that. He went to Heaney in the second half to try and dull his impact, which he did moderately well. Um, I was actually impressed with Corbo's game, so I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't agree with that one. Yeah, I actually like. I've, I've, I've liked the. Uh, utility like nature that we've seen from Coldwell. Like obviously mm. not playing a key position, but he's he's spent some time in the guts and he spent some time at half forward and then he's kind of just moved around and kind of, you know, done a few different jobs, which I which I've liked because I really wasn't sure how well he'd go at that this year. Um but yeah, I think he's had a pretty good start. So mm. uh let's do one more. Uh this one's from Ethan. Thanks, Ethan. Look I know it's only two games into the season. And I guess, you know, add the other two games with the two practice matches we've played, but um, I've seriously got major question marks over Xavier Dersma, and um, especially his kicking. Like, I don't know, just his awareness tonight, his kicking, just everything about it. Surely he runs two ways, which is okay, I mean, considering the way we got slaughtered in transition tonight, but um, his disposals and de- decision-making have got massive question marks. Because especially even leaving his man wide open as well tonight, like it happened way too many occasions in that last quarter as well. He was fought for two goals just as when we're on the comeback as well. But fucking hell, man, this club, I swear to fucking God, gives you way too much false hope of optimism. We're never going to win this game tonight. We'll never even a fucking chance. But like in those first three quarters, it gave me some hope. And then when Swans got the first goal of the last quarter, you know, extended three points, game's done. No, we just kick the next three and it gets me interested again. Only just to rip my <laughs> fucking heart out. But anyways, look, we move. We're never going to win this game. And on to the Saints next week, which it'll be tough because um the way we defend transitions and St. Kilda love to do it, especially with the side Wangan and Malira. So yeah, but I don't know. Up the planes and... Let's get the four points next week. God. Uh, thoughts on Dersma? Yeah, I thought he was better than the first week. But, yeah, again, didn't sit the world on fire. Um, mm. But I feel like, yeah, I, you know what? I don't know. He was quiet. Yeah. Not, not noticeable. Yeah. We spoke about it That's last it. week. Yeah. Just not noticeable. I was trying to, in my mind, say, look for him, look for him. But, um, yeah, just a bit of a, mm. I don't know. Bit of a maybe, he's, game. maybe he's playing the role that they want him to play and all is well, but yeah, he's not, not being noticeable. Yeah, like I remember they I remember there was that season where 
Zaharakis got like no touches of the ball and everyone was like, we've got to drop him. He's doing nothing. And then I think it was Wusher was like, no, 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 he's playing the role where he needs to be. And I fit in a way, I kind of feel like it's kind of his responsibility to like try and take it, you know, take space and sort of stay out in the particular part, like side of the ground just to kind of do that. But yeah, like they got so much out of their wings, um, Sydney, and we just really didn't. Um, yep. And I don't know. I just guess I kind of expect a bit more from him, but you know, time will tell. Like I, I, I doubt we're going to see him dropped this soon into no. the piece. Um, but yeah, he has been very quiet. Very, 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 very quiet. Um, a thought before we wrap up, fellas. Maybe let's have a look at who potentially can come into the side if um, if Peter is hung out to dry, which is what we expect. Mm-hmm. Um, there is also whispers going around that Andrew McGraw is in a moon boot today at the club. So Jeez. maybe adding one there. Um, did either of you catch any of the VFL game that was like because it was like the broadcasters or the yeah like Brisbane smashed them um, for. One quarter, and that was probably enough, but they did okay. That Archie Roberts kid, though, I reckon he's pretty good. I reckon he's a find. Mm. I reckon he's just kind of slipped through the cracks of the draft, and we've picked him up. And I would not be surprised if we saw him playing in the first half of the season in the AFL at some point. Mm. Like it would, yeah. it would require someone to obviously miss, but the way things are going, that's probably going to open up pretty quickly. Um, like he's like <laughs> Redmond, Redmond will come back in, but. You know, there's obviously possibilities of other guys getting injured or whatnot, but Archie Roberts, I like him. Yeah, good. I like him a lot. Good to hear. Well, yeah. he did slip at the draft, didn't he? He was supposed to be a lot higher than he ended up going. And where was he playing? Was he running through the middle or was he on the halfback? Or? Sort of like halfback sort of ish yeah. is what, from what I saw. It was very, it's very blurry, that VFL vision. <laughs> and like I'm, I'm Chromecasting it onto the TV and it's making it even more blurry and laggy and I'm sitting there and Sasha's like, what are you watching? I'm like, I'm trying to watch the reserves, but... I can't really tell who's who at the moment. Uh, I don't really know what's going on, but I can see that we're losing. So <laughs> that was kind of the uh, that was kind of the tale. Um, if Peter's out, uh, are we Jones back in Chufta, or are we just going to roll the dice and give Nate Caddy a crack? Oh, I'd love to see Nate Caddy. Yeah. I'll, I'll go with option C. Um, I think everyone would probably want to see him, but. Um, Brad Scott tends to be mm. on the more conservative side with these decisions, but. Um, yeah, if you're asking me, that's uh, that that gets my vote. I reckon it'll be Harry Jones. I mm. just got the feeling it'll be him. I can't imagine it'll be Sam Wiedemann. Yeah, old chuff. Yeah, like they weren't getting a lot of service the forwards in the VFL. Mm. Um, so yeah, like it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to be a key forward in the VFL and the balls and come down there. Like, yep. how are you meant to get better? So I, there's part of it's like, yeah, is it better just developing him by like caddy? I mean, just by playing him. Yep. Um, but again, like, you know, had a little injury interrupted preseason. So maybe they're just going to be very cautious. Is Draper good enough to play 50% game time in the forward 50? Um, maybe. He had two yeah. shots on goal. He had that one that was terrible, but that was a strong contested mark. So who, so who's coming in then? If we're not bringing in a, a key forward, are we just, who's like, who's coming into this team? Because it feels like, we, I mean, like, I mean, I guess ADJ could start and then someone else could come in and sub. Maybe mm-hmm. the, maybe Archie Roberts comes in as plays the sub. Like, who who would you bring in? Well, yeah, well, you're right. We've got Redmond to come back in. Yeah. Um, Parrish will probably be right. Yeah. Um, so maybe it's a, one of those two and no other changes kind of thing. Mm. Um, as you said, Kelly could be back this week. Kelly, Kelly will probably be back, you'd think. You'd think. I mean, Dylan Sh- nah, Dylan Shaw will probably get to run the reserves. Ridley? No, he's probably still on the week. I, think oh, I, I was mm. reading earlier today that there was whispers of him sort of being touch and go. Um, oh, God, that'd be nice. But again, Brad Scott usually pretty safe with these yep. uh, decisions. So I, I would say probably lean towards no, even if he is 50-50 or medically cleared, as Brad likes to uh, yeah, like say at the presses. Mm, but oh um, it'd be handy. Yeah, it'd be really, really handy to get Ridders back. Um, and then uh, reading as well, not a lot of people were too happy with Hindy's game. Um, however, I think there's an opportunity for him to play a defensive forward role on Wanganee Malera, who had 32 disposals at 81% efficiency, which was ridiculous, but mm. it was against Collingwood, so I enjoyed it. <laughs> um, and we've seen Scott go to Guelphie to do that for Sicily in round one, so I wouldn't be surprised if they... Looked at that. Mm. hindy has been training with the Fords most of preseason, is my understanding as well. So it's not as like it's going to be completely foreign to him. But 
Um, yeah, I, I saw plenty of people that weren't happy with his game, so whether he keeps his spot, I'm not sure. Yeah, I've just seen the clip on social media, or on social from uh, AFL 360 of him swinging a late elbow, which, gee, looks like he wanted it to connect and he would have absolutely rattled someone if he if he had. Mm. Um, yeah, I feel like if I'm Brad Scott and I'm saying that, whether he hit or missed or intended to hit or miss, you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if that's that's something to help you get admitted from the team. Yep, doesn't look good. No, you know. Um, yeah, as well, funny as it looks, but don't do it. <laughs> yeah, lucky Heine misses a lot of targets. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. God, yeah, good bike Heine, but gee, I didn't like looking at that video. Mm. Didn't like that. Um, any final thoughts from you, gents, before we wrap up for an evening? Now, the positivity train is going to continue uh, as long as we keep doing this. Um, yeah, I'm, I've, I've liked what I've seen the first two weeks um, and are patience you, is a virtue. Are you going to go to the game live this weekend or yeah. are you going to watch yep. the replay? Yeah, I'm going to go. Okay. No, 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 yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> you'll know on when, uh, Monday next week yeah. um, whether it's continuing or not. Yeah, yeah. No, that is that is completely fair. That is completely fair. What do you what do you reckon, James? Positivity train rolling on? Yeah, stay positive. Uh, as I said at the start of the pod, I reckon it's a really good measuring stick for us this week. We played mm. a team that's presumably lower than us. We played a team that's well above us. Now we get an opportunity at a team that I reckon is around the mark. So I think we'll all have a clearer picture after this week. But mm. staying positive. Um, and Peter Wright to kick a couple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Free Peter. Free Peter. Um yeah, I, I I don't know if I'm positive or negative. I mean, I I microwave my membership after the first practice game, so uh, <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to go on this. I'm, I don't know how I can attend the football on Saturday. Um, but look, uh, cracking show, everyone. Um, thank you for all your work. Um, oh, thanks to our friends at Ticket Blaster who sent me some Medallion Club tickets, but um, they've rebranded, and I don't know the details, so I can't promote them any further. But they're great people, so maybe I'll promote them properly next week because I'm. They didn't send me the information, so I don't know what I'm supposed to do. (laughs) What am I supposed to do? Um, Thanks, everyone. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching on YouTube. Uh, Premium show on Thursday. Uh, I think Ollie's going to be on, which which will be a bit of fun. Um, So preview the game. I'm not sure if I'm going to do much else. I don't have time to do a video this week. so Preview the game. I've got actual work to do. Um, Anything else you want to plug or promote? No? Got any gigs coming up, Joel? Uh, do I try and lock something in? Actually, yep. uh, I'm on. Uh, I'm on the radio tomorrow night. Um, on the radio, yeah, we've got a show on uh, Area Three Thousand Radio, eight till ten tomorrow night. So there that'll be go. fun. There you go. If you like a bit, of, like a bit of the techno, footy and techno. If you, like, if you like footy and techno, that's the place to be mm. tomorrow night. Uh, but until then, go planes up the dons. Yeah, planes. Go dons.